Welcome to Minutes with Linus, brought to you by Wellness Woman 40 and Beyond. Embark on this journey with me, Linus Woods Mullins, your certified holistic living and wellness expert for women over 40, as we explore tips for an ever growing mind, body, and spirit in just a few minutes. Welcome, welcome uh, to Linus Minutes uh, Sharing is Caring segment. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's very interesting. But first, let me welcome all of the new members to the Wellness Woman group. We are so close to 2,000. I can taste it. So Mm -hmm. welcome, welcome. And also welcome to all the replayers on Instagram and also on uh, YouTube and Twitter. It's wonderful to have you here today. We've got an interesting topic that really resonates with my spirit because just recently, Over the last few months, a few of my girlfriends have been talking about the idea of getting back out there and dating again and how um, crazy it is out there. And so I thought it would be a great idea to invite um, Shell Guidry. She is a relationship coach, a speaker, and a women's health expert. And she's going to be talking about the five keys to dating success. Um, after a long-term relationship. And I don't know if you can see that title, but there it is. Basically, we're saying that there is love after 40, 50, 60, and beyond. Right, Cheryl? Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, tell us how you became an expert in this particular field. Well, you know, you become an expert when you go through, you know. And so I actually divorced and um, remarried at 50. Mm -hmm. And along that journey of self-discovery uh i found things that were that i was missing and things that helped me get through Mm -hmm. and i start talking to my uh, uh, friends and patients and that had were coming in for similar problems and uh they would tell me there's a there was a need this is a need you know so the last five years i've been thinking about this and I said, this is where we need to focus because it's a a big problem, you know, because a lot of women have been in long-term relationships Mm -hmm. and they don't know how to navigate once they decide to get back into the dating scene. It has changed. Yes, it has. I would imagine I would be pretty intimidated. One of the first things I would think about is like, oh my gosh, not just the whole idea of just dating again, but the whole idea of being intimate, not just talking about sexual relationships, but just being intimate in terms of getting to know another person. Yeah. The idea of that, I mean, it took me 17 years to break in the current husband. So I yeah. just can't even imagine. <laughs> so I can understand why people would be intimidated by something like this. Yeah. So yeah. you gave me some ideas or tips that I guess you take your clients through. And we're going to share some of that with the Wellness Woman Group. Now, ladies, take some notes. Okay. Take some notes. <laughs> take some notes. Okay. Here we go. Um, I think here we go. Here we go. Okay. You said that it's important for us to know um, our value, and that should be your, know your value, and uh, to pause and clear the clutter. Uh, What kind of clutter are we talking about when you say that? We're talking about emotional clutter. When you've been in a marriage like I was in for for 21 years, there's a lot of um, clutter there that has gone on. um, You've changed. You're not the same person you were when you first married. I was 19, 20 when I married. So I'm not the same person at 42 uh, as I was at 19. So there's been a lot of changes, a lot of growing up. And so you want to make sure that depending on the reason that you uh, ended that relationship or maybe you lost a spouse, (laughs) that you uh, are able to clear that clutter and see where, who am I after 21 years? Who am I after a failed relationship? Who am I after um, a divorce? You know, so you want to clear that first before you go into another relationship because you'll bring all that clutter to a new relationship and you don't want to do that. Well, how do you know? How do you go about clearing it? Is that something that you help uh, your clients with? Yes. So first you have to just acknowledge you know, acknowledge your feelings, you know, acknowledge how you're feeling after you, you know, after you have lost a spouse, you know, that's, that takes a, a lot out of you when you've lost a spouse, someone that you've been with for 40 years, 30 years. Um, so you want to acknowledge your feelings. I encourage journaling. Journaling got me through, you know, because you put those feelings down on paper and you read them and, and you actually can see where you're going, 
you know, so you want to acknowledge by um, journaling. Then you want to connect with your tribe, you know, those who are really close to you. Because a lot of times your close girlfriends <clears throat> know a whole lot about you and they can tell you, well, you know, I saw those signs coming down the line, you know, you know, um, he was like that all the time, you know, if it was a failed relationship that was toxic. So you want to get with your tribe and, uh, you know, get it out, talk it out with a close friend. Uh, then you want to, you know, get a little self love going. You want to get a massage, do something that you haven't done in a long time. For me, it was getting out and dancing. I love to dance. So I started taking dance classes and I got back into exercise. I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning, going to the track and then going to the gym before I went to work. So you have to uh, focus on self-love, you know? Uh, and then if you get stuck, get your counselor. You know, counseling is something that will help you also to uh, get through the feelings, you know, see where you're at, especially when you're stuck, because you don't want to stay stuck. You want to move forward. You know, everyone is different, you know, and you go through a grief process when you get out of a relationship. You know, sometimes your anger when it's a divorce, it could be some anger, resentment. And those things are toxic to a new relationship. So you don't want to go into a new relationship and you still have some mistrust and uh, resentment from the last relationship. Well, those are some, some really good tools and things that they can, to, can that we can use to kind of uh, figure out where our clutter is. But exactly. you also said another thing that um, you think is important is to, to define your truth. Exactly. What does that mean? Uh, who am I? What do I want in a relationship? What was missing from that last relationship? Um, what are your values? My, what I value in a relationship uh, is intimacy. Uh, I value humor. I like to laugh and have fun. I like spontaneity. You know, my husband now, he, um, you know, if he says pack a bag, let's just go for, no, if he just says go for a drive, I know I need to pack a bag because we may not be coming home. You right. know, I love that. You know, so um, someone that uh, empowers you and helps you to uh, move towards your goals. You know, you want to build someone who's going to build you up, not take you down. Yes. And so uh, those are some of your values, you know, and what are you seeking in a relationship? Are you wanting to get married again? Are you wanting just a, a committed companion? These are some things you need to define before you start dating because you don't want someone else to put their values on you. You want to have your values in check and not veer too far from them um, in the process of dating. And that makes a lot of sense because I think sometimes we don't take the time in general to actually really think about that or even put it down on paper in terms of what we're looking for, what we're not looking for. Uh, sometimes we just kind of fall into relationships in the past that might have been, you know, what we did. So here are some clear, concise things that you want to figure out even before you start that process. Right. And right. what about security? You, security! You got, yeah, security. <laughs> I love it. Be aware of red flags. That is yes. so important. When you say red flags, what are you talking about? I'm talking about um, you're in a relationship and you don't hear from that person until 10 o'clock at night. Mm. Okay. So what's happening the other hours of the day? Um, why only 10 o'clock at night? You know, is this... You know, is this just a sexual thing we call a booty call? You know, what what is that? Um, what of uh, your expectations? Uh, you know, sometimes if um, they're very controlling, you know, they want to tell you right off the bat, you just met them, they're trying to tell you what to wear. Um, mm. You can't wear that in public. Or they're, um, they're very uh, controlling, just a real controlling person. If you see that in the beginning, that's a red flag because uh, as it, the relationship grows, it will get worse. You know, yes. so, mm -hmm. someone who, who steps on your self-esteem. Again, you want someone who's going to build you up, not someone who's going to take you down. And that's, so, I can understand why that's very important, but I can also understand why sometimes women get stuck on that because we have a tendency to rationalize. Right. Oh, he, that's just, that's nothing. We'll change that later, you know, and we think 
with our hearts a lot of times. And so that's why I always encourage, you know, everyone has their values, but I encourage women to um, not uh, become intimate too soon because a lot of times once you induce uh, physical intimacy, it's really hard to um, look at the red flags and, and see that it's something that should not be there. You just go along with it, you know? And so you need to take that time and date and enjoy dating again and, and figure out, is this really the person that you want in your life? Yeah, and I would also imagine another thing you want to think about or part of a red flag intuition is if you see something that you've seen before in someone else and you didn't recognize it, but this time you see it and you really should have more than an aha moment, you should be putting on your tennis shoes and run the other direction. Exactly. Because you've been there, you've done that before. Exactly. And another thing I was thinking about too, because I know you are a nurse practitioner on top of all your other accomplishments. And a lot of people think, that if you are in the 50, 60 game, 40, 50, 60 game, and you're dating someone that was married before, and this is his first relationship outside of being married, this is your first relationship outside of being married, then you should be safe and don't need protection. Oh talk no. About, talk about that a little bit, please. Oh no. We, the last decade, STDs have risen in the uh, 40, 50 over crowd. Mm-hmm. And it's because women are going through menopause And so we know we can't get pregnant anymore. So we're not really thinking about STDs. You know, that's for the younger kids. No, it is growing in our age group. Mm -hmm. And you have to um, be sure, you know, and the only way to be sure is to have testing that both of you are doing together, showing lab results. You know, a lot of men will say, Oh, I get tested every year. Well, usually men don't go to the doctor every year, you know, right. it's the time. <laughs> and so you have to make sure that you're looking out for your best interests, you know, condoms, or if you're uh, going to stick to, you know, no intimacy until you get married or until you're dating for a while, stick to that. Don't let anyone veer you from that plan because you don't know someone's history by looking at them. Mm-hmm. You could look very good looking, dressed up and have several STDs, you know? So you wanna uh, protect yourself, be proactive, carry your own condoms with you if you decide to go that route. Okay, and what about um, for women who haven't dated in 20 or 25 years, how do they get started? What's the first step? What should they do? And we talked about some things they should be looking out for and self-evaluation and figuring out what they're looking for. But let's say they've gone through all that. They've gone over, you know, red flags, things to look for. Now it's time to open up the little red book, black book or your um, iPad or whatever. Mm-hmm. And do you go on online and get, um, and get a dating app or something? Or you look for someone at the post office? How, how do you go about I say, I tell women to um, don't look past your front step. A lot of times you have friends, you know, especially at that age, you have friends that you knew many years that maybe you didn't date and um, look for people that you are already familiar with that might be single also Mm -hmm. and just get out. You have to put yourself out there to be attracted to someone and for someone to see you. So get out, go bowling, uh, uh, learn a new sport like golfing. There's a lot of single men golfing. Um, get out to social events where you, men can see you. Mm-hmm. You know, you got that new swag about you, new uh, self-image, uh, dress up, new outfit, new look. And um, if you're happy and you're positive, you're going to attract men to you. Um, and when they see that confidence in you. But mm-hmm. I say, look for friends, you know, just casual friends first. And then sometimes uh, love will grow out of that. I'm a a product of that. My husband knew each other in high school, never dated and class reunion, 30 years later, here we are, you know. Wow, that's something. (laughs) Right. We have have similar stories uh, because I met my second husband when I was four years old at church. And then uh, we knew each other growing up and graduated from the same high school but we never dated. We knew a lot of the same friends and all that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't, we didn't get married until I was 45 years old. So, and and it's so funny too, because when we first got together, our friends who knew both of us, they were like, 
don't you guys know each other? <laughs> We're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, All our lives. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But it was somebody, it, like you said, it was somebody that I knew that I was a friend with. And I think that friendship is so important because really? a lot of the other stuff will go away. Exactly. But that friendship. Now, here's another one, because I certainly have my sob story around this. What about the kids? For those folks who still have kids at home, how does that uh, work in when it comes to dating? How do you advise your clients when it comes to things like that? Um... My rule of thumb, especially with uh, young kids at home or teenagers at home, uh, I ne never dated in my home. Mm -hmm. um, my kids met my husband to be uh, not until I thought it was very serious and going that direction. Mm -hmm. They knew of him, but uh, I didn't bring anyone in my home. Um, because again, once you bring them in, now you feel like you have to keep them in, you know, when I say bring them in, not living in, but bring them in and expose them to your family, then um, it's harder to push them out, you know? So I did all my dating outside of the home, you know, we met at restaurants, we traveled, that kind of thing. And so um, I advise to um, keep away from family at first until you feel it's gone, uh, a more intimate route and then expose them to your family because your family can see things you can't see. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And if I had, if I had to do over again, that would be the thing that I would change that I dated after my divorce. But um, if I had to do over again because they were teenagers, um, I just would have waited until they were out of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing harder than trying to blend a family with teenagers. Oh my God. Yes. Too many hormones flying yes. around. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's for sure. Now, one of the things that you shared with me also was about the whole self-image over, um, yeah. overhaul. And you mentioned kind of that about, um, you know, even though you might have the new hairdo, the new outfit, and, you know, this all the stuff you've done on the outside, at some point or time, you advise that you have to know that you are enough. Yes. You are. You're enough. Because when we're midlife, you know, the body has changed. You know, I was like, oh, my God, you know, dating I've had four kids, you know, I have stretch marks, I have this, I have that, you know, and so you have to start seeing yourself in a more positive light, you know, mm -hmm. and I remember my husband telling me, he said, that's your journey. Those scars are your journey. He said, that shows you had four beautiful kids. I'm like, you know, where was he all my life? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so you have to feel good about your body and know that your body is, that is your journey that does tell your story, you know, of children, of uh, whatever, of breastfeeding, whatever it is that you did. So you want to feel more positive about yourself, you know, do some meditation, um, positive affirmations in the morning, you know, I'm beautiful, I am enough, mm -hmm. you know, so um, more positive. Well, you know, and that's interesting because I, I've worked with women before around a, um, from a wellness perspective, their body image and stuff. And um, they are telling me sometimes that it, it's difficult for them to even say those kinds of things to themselves because they're not feeling it deep down inside. So for people who are struggling with the idea of affirmations, what other kinds of things do you coach women to do to help them uh, embrace their uh, body image? Get with a wellness coach. So that, <laughs> so that wellness coach can help them see those things that they're not seeing, you mm -hmm. know, because sometimes others can see what you don't see. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the activities that I do at my workshops is have two women get together and tell what they see in the other one that's beautiful. Ah. And so when, you know, you won't think that someone would think that, okay, you have beautiful eyes, you have a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love your energy. You know, so when you hear someone else say that to you, it's easier to, to hear, you know, it's like, oh, yes. okay, thank you. Yes. you know, because and, sometimes if, if a guy says that, you're like, yeah, right, whatever. Yeah, right. We know uh, what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's really too bad, too, because, again, that's some of our emotional baggage that maybe we need to clear because maybe we were with someone or had dated men who were disingenuous and not yeah. sincere. And yeah. I think that's one of the toughest things for men getting back out there is how, you know, this woman that I want to date 
where is her attitude at? And is she going to like I cut me down as soon as I you know, say anything? So it's a two way street, I guess. Yeah, He's got yeah. the baggage. You've got the baggage. Right. Yeah. And so I, I would imagine you kind of have to be aware of each other's baggage. You may even want to have that talk at some point as you exactly. decide you know, to date that second time or that third yeah. time. Like, you know, what? Let, let's have a baggage date. <laughs> What's your, I'll show you my baggage. You, you show, show me yours. yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, in relationships, um, you never have that discussion or no. it's such a sensitive discussion. But the no. reality is, especially if you're over 40 or in, in your case, you, I know you specialize in particular with women over 50, you're going to have some baggage, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Midlife baggage. You know, you've lived a half a century, so you have a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So not to acknowledge it is kind of like... Uh, an obvious thing that you would want to do, I would imagine. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of these tips. And, and I think these are some things that maybe women might know, but they're not actually doing or they've forgotten about it. Or in some cases, they're not even thinking about it because they think yeah. it's not a possibility. But right. here we are. I remarried yeah. at 45 and yeah. you were married after your first marriage. So see, you, you just never know. Exactly. And I love that picture, by the way. I love your colors. Thank you. That picture, yes. And here's your contact information. Everybody write it down or go to the replay and, and write it down. And if you're listening, um, on um, Anchor FM, which goes to everywhere. Um, her um, website is safedatingover50.com. That's safedatingover50.com. And you can email her also at Cheryl at safedatingover50.com. And that's yeah. C-H-E-R-Y-L. Cheryl yeah. at safedatingover50.com. And yeah. I understand you have um, an offer for those who yeah. are listening to this. I do for your... Your uh, listeners today, I'm offering a free 30-minute consultation. It's like a, a blueprint, a dating readiness uh, consult. Ooh. And so um, it gives you the opportunity to see the areas that um, would be beneficial for you to work with. And if you feel that uh, that was of value to you, then I offer you to work along with me. But uh, it is like a blueprint. It's a blueprint to tell you which way to go. So... Just like you go to a financial yeah. advisor mm -hmm. to find out about your finances, go to a relationship coach mm -hmm. and help you find your, your love of your life. That is fantastic. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for sharing these tips. And you're on Facebook as well? I am. Okay, fantastic. So you can actually message her at Facebook right now for that 30-minute consultation. Yes, and uh, thank you, uh, Wellness Women, and all the other folks on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube for listening. And I want to remind you that it's a new month for those of you who are listening. And um, this is August of 2019. It's a new month. So Wellness Women, remember, um, I always have Wellness Woman of the Month. And for those of you who are sharing and liking, whoever my uh, top three people are, are going to be getting a gift. We had uh, three top three uh, people last month and their gift is on the way. Uh -huh. And uh, the gift comes from Vibe Living. And I'm really excited to be able to share that with you. And please tune in. I'm going to be back again on Friday uh, with Linus Minutes with more information on how you can be well in your mind, body, and spirit as you age. Thanks so much, Cheryl, for joining us. And thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Here. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have something to share, please comment below. For more Wellness Woman videos, be sure to click the subscribe button below and check out my Facebook group, Wellness Woman 40 and Beyond. But most importantly, don't forget to love yourself and educate, encourage, and empower your mind, body, spirit, wellness.